Hi, I'm Maria Nadestad. I work on the genomics team in Google Health. And this is a talk called Deep Variant 1.0 that I originally gave these slides as a presentation at the Biological Data Science meeting at Cold Spring Harbor Lab in November of 2020. And I wanted to record it now so that we can put it out on the internet and hopefully other people and users of Deep Variant, other scientists and so on can get access to it and potentially you know, be able to use it to learn more about Deep Variant. So jumping right in. I've always been interested in visualization of genomic data. So when I was joining the Deep Variant team in 2019, I was really excited because Deep Variant works by using data visualization combined with image classification. So essentially it takes these read alignments it visualizes the data into pileup images and then uses an image classification neural network called a convolutional neural network um, to classify the images into variant calls. And then it does a little bit of post-processing on those and outputs final variant calls in like a VCF file. So digging a little more into this, uh, deep variants pileup images look something like this. We basically walk along the chromosomes. And for each variant that we find, we create an image like this where the putative variant is in the middle. Um, and we show 221 bases of the reference, including that one middle base. And within that window, we see the reference at the top, and then we pile up the reads at the bottom. So we call it pileup image, of course. And this is very similar to something you'd see in any other genome browser. So. This is like roughly what deep variant sees and how it can then do these classifications. Now, if we go further into detail, in fact, there aren't actually three colors in this image. It is actually six channels deep. And it isn't really an image, it's a tensor. But we can think of them a little bit like images. It's just that instead of having three colors, you have six channels. Um, which could be something like six colors, except we only have red, green, and blue when we're making images. And so we can't support more than like three channels if we did it that way. Now, people commonly think that Deep Variant is using regular like red, green, blue RGB images, but that in fact hasn't been true since the open source version came out in 2017. It has been these six channels and there even used to be a seventh, but it was removed very early on um, since it was found not to help. So these six channels include the read base, ATCG, uh, of the reads, the base quality, which comes from the sequencer, the mapping quality that comes from the aligner, and it's the same across the whole read. Um, this is mostly about mapping uniquely in the genome, whereas the base quality is about the quality of actually identifying is this an ATC or G at this particular base um, when you're doing the sequencing. The fourth channel is the strand of the alignment forward or reverse. And the fifth channel is read supports variant where we actually go and have there's algorithms inside of deep variant that go and look at the cigar string to see whether the specific variant is actually shown in the cigar string in the read. Um, that's probably the most complicated algorithm we use for creating the image itself but there are steps before that for actually identifying candidates are also a little bit more complicated and where there are more parameters you can set to, for instance, increase the sensitivity. But our defaults are extremely like well chosen. I think we've experimented a lot uh, with the default parameters uh, to get to where we are now. The sixth channel is base differs from ref. And so this basically lights up in white whenever the base in that read is different from the reference. This can either happen for the variant in the middle that you're looking at, or it can be different errors in the reads, or it can be other kind of systemic things such as other variants nearby, um, or potentially other things as well. So this gives us uh, a tensor of shape 100 pixels tall by 221 pixels wide, uh, bases wide, right? And uh, six channels deep. So let's play a little game where I'll give you kind of the opportunity to try to call some of these pile of images. And I'll do the first uh, slide first so that you can kind of see how I think through it. And then see if you can model that on the next slide. 
So first, this pileup image, I look at it and I see that in the fifth channel, we have read supports variant all lighting up in white. And that means that ostensibly all of the reads support this variant. I don't see any other issues like base qualities or mapping qualities being bad at all. So I think this is a two. And that means homozygous alternate. So that means that there are two copies of the alternate allele that we're proposing at this position. Um, this one, however, you have half of the reads supporting the variant in that fifth channel, read supports variant, and we still see no base or mapping quality issues or anything else that would give me a warning sign here. So I'm going to say that this is heterozygous, which means that there's one of the two copies supporting the alternate allele that we're proposing at this location. Now for this pileup image, I see less than half the reads supporting the variant. You can see the coverage is lower, like there are fewer reads actually shown here. We have some issues in the last channel. You can see there are more white dots showing, you know, read errors uh, in the different bases. And in the base quality channel, you see a lot more black too within the reads, so we have lower base qualities. And there's like one read showing bad mapping quality, uh, which in itself wouldn't be that big of a deal, but the base qualities, the fewer number of reads supporting, and the many differences um, between the reads and the reference tell me that this is probably kind of a classic case of a zero, where it's actually homozygous reference. Um, and so this is you know, something that is identified, but we actually say no. Now you get to try some of them. So I'll give a couple of seconds for you to think about what this one is. Zero, one, or two copies supporting the putative variant. This is a one, heterozygous. You have half the reads supporting. Um, pretty classic case of heterozygous. What about this one? Do, 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 do. <laughs> this is a two homozygous alternate. You can see all, basically all the reads are supporting the variant here. Very nice and clean. And this one. Right, so this is where we have low base qualities again. We have fewer reads supporting the variant, and you have many uh, differences within those reads. So this looks like a zero. Now, not all pileup images are this easy to classify, right? So it's less than 1% of pileups that are more difficult, but this is still incredibly important to get right because it's within that you know, less than 1% that all of our you know, errors are in every other kind of variant caller. So this is where like deep variants start to shine in like trying to make distinctions for these more difficult cases. Um, so none of these really make all that much sense, right? Like you have one here where you have very little read support, but it's actually supposed to be heterozygous. That's what the truth set said. And these are all coming from genome in a bottle's truth sets. That's how we do training. It's how we evaluate. It's basically where we get our truth set from is a genome in a bottle. And, you know, this is a zero, but maybe it looks more like a one, but it's a little bit hard to tell, so it's actually a zero. And this is supposed to be a zero as well. <laughs> but in this case, it's because that deletion you're seeing, you know, it comes like right before, there's kind of a deletion right before the variant. And so you get these like weird patterns sometimes. And this is where it gets kind of hard to call. So if you want to try playing against deep variant uh, some more, you can check out this collab notebook link in our blog post, looking through deep variant's eyes. All right. So now that we have these pileup images, let's look at the convolutional neural network that deep variant actually uses to classify them into the zero, one, and two classes that we talked about before. So this network is called Inception V3, is very standard in kind of the image classification space. And what we do is we take our pileup image, remember this is just a three-dimensional tensor, and we plug it into the beginning of this network uh, into the inputs. If we inspect the values after one convolutional layer, then we get these 32 channels now. Um, 
and I've just stacked them here so you can kind of see more of them on the screen. But they're pulling out different features like vertical and horizontal stripes, outlines, um, kind of like the presence or absence of reads. They're, they're kind of pulling out like different features. And as we go along, this gets more and more complicated and more and more abstract until finally you get to a decision. So if we instead take instead of like having one pileup image go through that process. Here I'm showing what happens if I have um, a few hundred pileup images that I put through the network and I pull out the values they have at different points. So if I just take the pileup images themselves and I run TSNE on them, I get that first plot on the left where it says input. Um, and so you're just like running TSNE on the values and basically seeing do the pileup images cluster or do they you know, have any kind of pattern that we can pull apart. And I've included the labels for zero, one, and two here as well. So you can kind of see whether it's pulling out any relevant information. After one convolutional layer, we can already see a little bit more separation of these values. Um, and as we go along, it becomes a little bit clearer that the zeros are clustering very nicely. Like they have a, they seem to have a lot of similarities with each other at this point in the layers. Uh, but the one is kind of all over the place. The two is also a little bit more clustered. So like zero and two are pretty easy to distinguish most of the time. But the ones are a little all over the place. Um, you know, blending between zero and two as well, because of course one is kind of a middle case between zero and two. As we do more and more convolutions, we start to see a lot better separation here. Um, now we're skipping all the way over towards some of the last layers here. And as we get all the way over, you can just see like the actual final predictions, which correspond to zero, one, and two. So I think this is kind of cool. This helps me understand more as a person who doesn't come from machine learning, but comes from genomics. I, I can kind of see, you know, how deep variance classification of you know, the convolutional neural network actually starts to make these decisions. And there's a lot more to it than this, of course, but this kind of gives you an idea of what's going on under the hood. Now, my past visualization projects were all made for human consumption. I was always visualizing data that humans would look at. Now that sounds really obvious, um, but it is exciting for me to work on something like Deep Variant where I'm making a visualization or at least modifying it because I wasn't there when Deep Variant was first created. Uh, but I do get to experiment on making changes to Deep Variant and you know seeing what happens. And a really cool thing is that many of the same principles apply. If you give more context, then you can potentially give more insights. Like the, the human or the computer can you know, make better decisions when there's more information and when you're showing it in a way that it can understand. So here's one particular change that I've worked on in Deep Variant. And this is where we take um, this is what like a normal pileup image looks like. It's all the reads are aligned against the reference, but for large structural variations, especially like this, or this I guess a small structural variation, um, but a lot of these changes, especially for indels, it can be really nice to see the pileup image, like what would happen if I actually, you know, made the insertion that we're proposing at this location, realign the reads to that and see whether the reads match better after the insertion has been added. So this is called alt aligned, right? So instead of aligning to the reference, we're also aligning to the alternate allele. And we actually show both so that deep variant can get that context. Um, so when we do that, it's now like clear that these reads support the insertion as well, but they were not marked as supporting the insertion because they don't span the whole insertion completely. And so you you get these kinds of like extra context just from aligning to the alternate allele. So we add this change to deep variant in the form of adding two extra channels. Now we see that our total number of errors has actually gone down 
uh, significantly. And this is now part of our production pack bio approach. So you may wonder with all of these different experiments that we've been doing and like trying to understand better how deep variant works overall, how is deep variant actually performing? And especially now that we've released deep variant 1.0, how does it compare to the previous versions of deep variant? The Illumina whole genome sequencing model is our oldest model of deep variant. And this was released in 2017 when deep variant was first open sourced as version 0.4. And you can see that there's been some improvement in accuracy over time, particularly in version 1.0 due to some updates and training data that we've made. Um, for whole exome, also for Illumina, this started in version 0.5, and we've made similarly nice improvements over time, again, specifically in version 1.0. Um, so hopefully this encourages you to check out newer versions if you are not already using them. Uh, for PacBio, this started in version 0.8, and in 1.0 especially, the indel errors have really decreased. This can be attributed mostly to the old line pileup method that I showed you before, and also to the uh, haplotype sorting that was also added in 1.0. So the workflow is a little different, but it has a profound impact on the indel error rate, which is particularly important in pack bio sequencing because so much of because so much of the error mode of pack bio sequencing is in indels. So reducing the indel error rate for pack bio data uh, is significant. So I wanted to show runtime as well because we had a huge speed up, especially in version zero point seven. Um, due to changes in both call variants and in make examples. So call variants is where you do the classification stage that uses the neural network. And so speed ups there have a lot to do with just speeding up how quickly the model is actually uh, being used. And in make examples, it's about preparing those pileup images. And so there, there were changes in both of these that enabled some huge speed ups. And so if you're using a version before 0 0.7, then you could get a nice speed up and make your run less expensive by upgrading to at least version 0 0.7. And we'd recommend, of course, using version 1.0. The change you see in PacBio where it increased in 1.0 is due to all the line pileups, but we actually already have a fix for that that speeds it up significantly. And I believe that's in version 1.1 already. So check that out. So another thing I really love about version 1.0 of Deep Variant is that it's when we introduced our hybrid model, which allows you to combine Illumina and PacBio data together, and you essentially get the best of both worlds. So you can see in this chart that PacBio usually has higher error rates than Illumina for indels, but lower for SNPs. And so hybrid actually ends up with a lower error rate than either of them in both indels and SNPs. So it's not just taking the best of each one, but there's actually a combination of effects here that makes the error rate even lower so that having both technologies together enables you to just um, perform really well on these calls. So I wanna thank everyone on the genomics team in Google Health and especially the core deep variant team that I highlighted here in yellow. Um, particularly Gunjin Bade, who helped to run all of the versions of Deep Variant so that I could have those nice charts to show you with accuracy and runtime uh, for this talk. So if you want to find out more information about Deep Variant, a great place to do it is our GitHub, where you can also ask questions on the issues. And also, please do check out our blog. Normally, I'd ask for questions at this point, but I guess the presentation is just over because this is online. So anyway, thank you all um, and goodbye. <laughs>